Hello, this is Mr. Coat video looking at Disney Toon Studios, which is sponsored by Chris over on Patreon. If you want to throw your support and possibly suggest some video ideas of your own, guaranteeing that spot on the schedule, just visit my Patreon. Link is in the description. And now, on with the show. Walt Disney Animation and Pixar are the most often talked about animation divisions within Disney, alongside their television animation unit. However, the direct-to-video animation studio is one that has quite the evolution over the years. The division started off as Disney Movie Tunes and was initially set up in a studio in Paris. The intention was to create smaller budgeted animated features starring familiar Disney characters like Mickey, Goofy, Donald, and even the Disney Afternoon personalities. The first of these came with DuckTales the Movie, Treasure of the Lost Lamp. Taking Saturday morning and syndicated television cartoons and putting them on the big screen was not uncommon at the time, but DuckTales the movie aspired to be more than just a series of episodes slapped together, and there was an upgrade in the animation beyond television quality, even if most could tell this was not the same team who had worked on The Little Mermaid. While DuckTales the movie managed to recoup its small budget, it did not really light the box office on fire, leading to the cancellation of the Chippendales Rescue Rangers movie. Disney Movie Tunes and Disney's French animation studio did manage to get another theatrical film off the ground with a goofy movie, which was considered a follow-up to the Goof Troop television series. This was a modest little success, but Disney Toon would come to be defined by a trend that was started a year earlier. When watching the first couple of episodes of the Aladdin television series, the high reps at Disney decide to package them and create a direct-to-video sequel titled The Return of Jafar, launching into a market of direct-to-video titles aimed at family audiences. The Return of Jafar was able to bank on the Aladdin name and was a phenomenal success. Following Aladdin and the King of Thieves, which had the added cachet of being both the finale of the television series and Robin Williams reprising his role as the genie, Disney Toon started churning these out like clockwork. Most of them were pretty underwhelming. Most of these were intended as straight sequels, while others, in the vein of Return of Jafar, were clearly stitched together television episodes. These direct-to-video sequels got a lot of hate from the Disney fandom, and I can understand that, as I was not a fan of them either. But I think the filmmakers and artists tried their best, despite their lower budgets, and they had the daunting task of following up some of the most popular and beloved animated films of all time. Two things Disney did I cannot be quite as forgiving towards. One was giving them theatrical releases. I'm okay with films like The Ticker Movie and DuckTales the Movie getting theatrical releases. They were their own thing and did have a quality that made them suitable for cinematic release. However, by slapping the likes of The Jungle Book 2 and Return to Neverland onto the big screen, you're saying those films are on par with the original animated classics. And no, they're not. Even the Disney animators were insulted at the director video sequels getting theatrical releases, as they took away from the specialness of their films and could partly be blamed for Disney shunning hand-drawn animation for a while. The other thing is a more recent trend of packaging the direct-to-video sequels with the theatrical films. The more prestigious Diamond Edition films avoided this fate, but I think Lilo and Stitch and The Emperor's New Groove deserve a lot more respect than being given the same Blu-ray with their direct-to-video sequels. Pretty sure those who want to purchase The Hunchback of Notre Dame on Blu-ray just won The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Thankfully, John Laster came in to save the day. When he was hired as a new head of Walt Disney Animation Studios and Disney Toon Studios, his first act was to stop production of the direct-to-video sequels. And Laster has kept to his word, as The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning, was the final one of these sequels to hit the shelves. Disney Toon was changed instead into an arm for spin-offs inspired by the films. Tinkerbell was deep into production at this point, but Laster decided to completely overhaul it, and the entire film was transformed under his watch. I only saw the first Tinkerbell, which I found, while nicely animated, did a complete disservice to Tinkerbell and what made her such a scene-stealing personality in Peter Pan. 
However, it was well liked by the target audience and this franchise sold enough copies to generate six films. The other spin-off developed under John Laster's leadership and one he personally greenlit was Planes, set in the world of cars. At the last minute, Disney decided to release it theatrically. And yep, watching Planes on the big screen, I cannot help but think I should be watching it on a television set instead. The Disney animators were fairly vocal about their annoyance with the direct video sequels getting a theatrical release, so I wonder if Pixar animators felt that work was also being devalued. A lot of people do assume Pixar was behind planes when the only connection is Laster's involvement as an executive producer and coming up with a story. This was followed a year later by the sequel Planes Fire and Rescue, which did manage to make $150 million on its $50 million budget. However, I wonder how much effect the Planes films had on Cars 3's underwhelming box office this summer. After the final Tinkerbell film was released two years ago, it has become rather quiet at Toon Disney. Outside of an untitled theatrical film announced for 2019, there hasn't been any news about what's been going on there. And what was this untitled film? Could it be a Sophia the First movie? People really like that show. Maybe they were going back to the unit's original intent and making a Mickey Mouse movie. None of these, apparently, as Disney announced at D23 it would be another car spin-off, except set in outer space. I won't deny this project has potential, as we haven't explored what spacecrafts are like in the Cars universe, but I would like to see Disney Toon do more than just Cars spin-offs and Tinkerbell movies. I know John Laster is an advocate for hand-drawn animation, as hard as it is to believe right now. Why not use the Disney Toon Studio to make more hand-drawn films featuring the classic characters, or even the Disney Afternoon characters? With the current superhero craze and the popularity of more satirical comic book fare like Deadpool and the Lego Batman movie, I think a Duck and Duck movie would go over really well. He's nostalgic to a certain generation, but also timeless enough to appeal to today's young audience. A new film featuring the three caballeros would also be a wonderful treat, and maybe more timely than ever. Disney apparently sees them as popular enough to open their own attraction at Epcot, so why not have Disney Toon create a new movie for them? Speaking of the theme parks, you could have used that space at the former magic of Disney Animation to create hand-drawn films released under the Disney Toon name. But sure, you thought a Star Wars area was a better investment, I get it, but come on, I'm giving you free ideas here, Disney. I just feel like Disney Toon Studios has so much more potential, and I don't think the company is taking full advantage of this division. I just want to see more goofy movies and less planes from them. And then Disney could have three amazing feature animation studios under their banner. See you next time.